Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you glad to be here today? Amen. Yeah. Stand with me. I want you to repeat after me. Today, today, I choose, I choose to forget my problems, to forget my problems, to leave the world outside, to leave the world outside, to worship Jesus, to worship Jesus with a smile on my face, with a smile on my face. With a smile on my face. <laughs> with a smile on my face. And with everything that I've got. And with everything that I've got. Amen. Are you, do you believe Amen. that this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's get ready to worship God. Amen. Amen. Julie's here. We got a smile. <laughs> glad that we can come and sing about our risen Amen. Savior, right? Amen.
neighbor, I don't think in real life, but last night when Chris and I were coming back from Jacksonville, I had the privilege of seeing two. And I sat there and I was just in awe. I was like a little kid, like, oh my gosh, make a wish, make a wish, make a wish. But as I got to thinking about it and looking up at the sky, I thought, what? Wow, how great is God's timing? To shoot a, stu- a shooting star to remind me that He is the Lord over all the universe. And He created the stars. And I thought about, you know, as they were traveling to go see Him. You know, they followed a star. And you know, you know, what kind of star? Bright star, shooting stars. Were there shooting stars everywhere because it was like fireworks because the Savior was born? I don't know, but it was the greatest experience to not only see one, but two. And it just reminded me how great our God is. And I want to go back and sing verse 3. It says, Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. That should be our prayer for all of us this morning, right? Because you know what? God never leaves us. We leave Him. But the beauty of the prayer this morning is, Lord, stay by me, close by me forever, and love me. Even when I may stray, still love me, pull me back in. Show me the signs like the shooting star. Give me something, Lord, to renew my strength. Amen? So let's sing this and make this our prayer this morning. Be near me, Lord Jesus. came to Jerusalem they asked people where is the child who has been born to be king of Jews we saw the star shows he was born we saw it rise in the sky we have come to worship him amen The verse says, we have come to worship him. Have you come to worship Christ this morning? Amen. Our next song, I love, love, love. We declare your majesty. Amen. Amen. And we exclaim, proclaim that your name is exalted. Amen. For you reign magnificently, rule victoriously. I'm trying to remember all the words, Dana. Go to the next slide. And your power is shown throughout the earth. Again, shooting stars. That's God's power, right? So let's make this. This is our last song before our offering. Then you can sit down and rest. Let's make this our worship song this morning. We declare your majesty. And it gets to a part where it says, and we explain that our God is mighty. Let's sing it out for him this morning. Remember, we're giving God our best today. Amen. Amen. Your name is exalted, for you reign magnificently, rule victoriously, and your power is shown throughout the earth. We declare your majesty, we proclaim that your name
see the smiling faces today we know that God is good to us and we can especially uh, praise the Lord during the time of Christmas isn't it beautiful to be a part of the Christmas season every day to go into to the town and see the people and and have a great time if you can uh, not get caught up in the turmoil of things but being thankful especially too during this time of the year um, I know that Julia's here is Oh, she's hiding up here. It's good to have you here, Julie. We miss you being here. Amen. <laughs> Julie. Let's give God another hand for blessing you. And through it all, Julie, we, we can thank God for sometimes the pain and sometimes the symptoms, but we never know who God may place in our path to help us and direct us in the right way. So we thank God for the people that were there. 
the nurses and the ones that recognize these things, you know. But forever giving God praise for the things he does for us. Amen. Um, if you're visiting with us today, we appreciate you being here. We welcome you to God's house. And if you haven't been here before or never filled out a visitor's card, there's some in the pew in front of you. If you would fill one of those out and put it in the offering plate, and we'll get to know you a little better. And thank you for that. On our prayer list, continue to remember Bill and Diane Blunt. Uh, Can I say something you saw? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Brother Richard. I knew he was with her, but I didn't know anything about him yet, but we will. Appreciate that. Amen. In our prayer list, continuing, um, Sister Doris Callahan and uh, Brother David, it's good to have David in service with us today. We know that God had brought you through uh, all, the, all these things. So let's give God a hand of praise for blessing David. <laughs> David told me the other night, he said, I, I think it's going to work this time. So uh, we're praying that it does. Amen. Amen. Um, Becky will have surgery this coming Friday. Remember her in our prayers. Also, Ed Harrison, uh, Abe Tootin, uh, not well today. Remember him. Uh, Sister Barbara Seals, this is Brother Jimmy's sister. Remember her in our prayers. And, of course, Kelly and, and Julie, uh, Junior and Charlotte Sapp uh, have had some of this flu virus. So pray for the both of them. And also Becky and Terry Ann also sick with it. Um, in a nursing home, remember all of our loved ones there. Um, good to have Buddy in service with us this morning. And our military on the back of your, your uh, prayer list, uh, remember all of our, our military, um, especially our, our church family, that those who are serving our country. Uh, Cassie and her husband should be in the States by now, so they'll be here for a few days and then they'll go on to Virginia. So. Um, thank you for the prayer for them and the traveling grace also. And um, this morning, if you have a, a special need today, uh, something that's on your heart that maybe it's something you've been praying for for a while, maybe it's a new need, but it doesn't really matter to God. All he knows that if you have faith and you believe today, things can change. Amen. So if you would lift your hand, uh, signifying to the Lord that you're faithfully believing that he's going to change some things for whoever you're praying for. Or situation in your life. Amen. So let's all stand as we pray today. <clears throat> Father, we certainly thank you for this beautiful morning of giving us, Lord. We never want to take for granted your presence in our midst today. We thank you for the beautiful songs, God, that we can sing. But Lord, we know that it's very important if we sing them from the heart and listen to the words, God, of how truly grateful you are to us beginning on that day in the manger, Lord, when you were born, God. And Father, we know that your son Jesus came here for that reason, to lift us up, to show us that it's possible to live for you, Lord. But no one ever said it would be easy, God. So we need you, Lord, to give us strength today. We need you, Lord, especially during this Christmas season, to bless those who have loved ones who have gone on before us, that we can remember those in a good way, and the memories, they're happy, God. And Father, we thank you for the ones this morning who are standing in faith and believing today, that you would touch the need upon each heart today. And Lord, that you would go to those who can't be here this morning and lift them up also and bless them in strength and in spirit, Lord. And we pray for Brother Danny today, Lord, as he brings forth the word, that you would bless him again, renewing his strength and spirit also. And we thank you for all these things, forever glorifying your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise today. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, as our should come today, we know that this is a, a season for giving. And um, we know that God's word tells us it's, it's really blessed to give. So we want to be in that spirit this morning as we give to our Lord and Savior and to his kingdom today that you would pray today and be led by the Lord in this time. Father, we thank you so much for all your blessings. 
Thank you, Father, for blessing us and our livelihood each day and our health, Lord, and everything we set out to do. And now, God, as we give toward your kingdom, that you would receive it as we give it for the right reason. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we get started this morning, I want to give a quick shout out. It's not every day that the choir gets gifts and they get presents, but we walked in here this morning and we had a beautiful gift laying on every seat up here. Choir, show them your gift. Misty made us all crosses. Isn't that pretty? Thank you, Misty. We're just to sing Chain Breaker. How many of you need your chain set free? Amen. Well, you're in the right place, okay? So sing with us today. He's a, he's a chain breaker for any frame that I cannot talk today for anything that you have going on. Join us as we sing. <laughs> Answers to all your problems today. 
And I'm going to tell you what, you're in the house of God today to worship and praise Him. And if you sit on your bottom and you can't get up and praise God during this song, guys, there's something wrong with your spirit this morning. There is something wrong with your spirit and you need to find it. He says, I am a chain breaker for every problem that you have today. I am a freedom maker for everything that you've got going on. Sing with us today. Father, we thank you this morning for everyone who took the opportunity to worship you by giving. This is a season where Satan would convince us to rob from you and spend it on somebody else for a gift. But God, those who love you know that we're to put you first. And you said that if we'll obey your word as far as our finances are concerned, that you'd open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon us that we could not contain. So I thank you for everyone who has given from the bottom of their heart. God, take what they've given today, multiply it, and use it for your kingdom. And God, we tell you today we love you and we prove it by giving unto you freely and with a loving heart. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
where there's been a lot of excitement, enthusiasm, good music, and thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Let me give you a couple things before I open and share the word with you today. Next Sunday night, we'll be having the Christmas celebration here. The service will be completely singing in whatever we want to do. We've asked you to get you a song, anybody, everybody, get you a song, get you a poem, do a recitation, do something. And we're going to take that night and let all of us just come forward and just bless God with whatever we want to do. It's going to be a fun time. Stephanie's already got uh, several names, but she can always use more. If we don't get enough names, I'll preach. And being that's right before Christmas, it may be a long sermon. So you see Stephanie and give her some names. Let's have a good time next Sunday night. This coming Wednesday night, we'll be having our Christmas party. And where's what we're going to do? We're going to begin up here. I want you to come up here next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Our children are going to be putting on a play, and they want to do it up here so they can be seen and be heard. These are our little kids. They've got to play. They've got words. Each one of them's got lines to say, and they want to make sure you see them. We don't have a place down there for you to see them. So next Wednesday, come here at 7 o'clock. We're going to let them put their program on for us, and we're going to clap for them and hug them and tell them how good they did. And then we're going to leave here, go down to the fellowship hall, and we're going to have some fun down there with fellowship, uh, with eating and drinking, giving of gifts, receiving of the gifts. And I've heard Santa's even going to be there. So we'll start here next Wednesday, then we'll go down there and finish up. We'll have the golf carts running. <clears throat> we'll have the golf carts running for anybody who wants to ride on the golf carts, okay? Thank you. Mm. Also, here is the winner of the Christmas tree decorations down there. So it is sealed, was delivered to me this morning. I've not looked at it, and I will not until Wednesday night. Whoever, whoever's name is in here will receive $100. So next, next Wednesday, we will down there. We will announce the winner of the Christmas tree decorations down there, okay? So we've got a lot planned for Wednesday. You be here and be a part of that. Don't forget, be here at 7 o'clock so we can get started with the kids up here. All right, open your Bible to the, to, to the book of Luke, chapter 2. Luke, chapter 2. <clears throat> All right, we get ready to go into our reading and begin to hear God's word this morning. I want to proclaim to you that there is but one God, Amen. the Lord God Almighty, Amen. the King of kings and the ruler of the universe. Amen. There is but one salvation, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ, which was freely shed at Calvary for mine and your sins. Amen. And there is but one hope for the Christian. And that is that Jesus Christ died and three days later he arose from the grave and he's alive and well today. And since he lives, we too shall live. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't you forget that Jesus loves you. He is our protector, our provider, our joy, our peace, our constant companion, our love. He is our wisdom, our strength, our salvation. He is our way. The truth, the life, he is our song, he is our deliverer, he is our praise, he is our king, he is our father, he is our friend. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is because of that that Julie and Kelly and David are in church this morning. 
the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke 2, verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and they had seen, and as it was told unto them. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 2, it says, And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their country another way. Father, this morning we ask you for your divine guidance and direction in this sermon. This is a time, God, that we hear the word of life. And that if we accept the word of life, then, God, our whole life will change in an instant. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your spirit that's here. I thank you for wisdom and understanding that's here. Now, God, let us do what we should and do it with much glory and much honor unto you. I stand here, God, willingly giving my life to you, saying, God, speak to me whatever you desire to speak. And I will be your voice for this day. God, thank you and know that I love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What are you going to do with the sermon this morning? Three men were sitting in an office. They were all brilliant men. And all of a sudden, a being appeared to them. And the being turned to one of them. And he said, I want to do something for you today. I'm going to grant you a wish. You can have infinite wisdom, infinite health, or infinite money. What will you choose? And the man, without even hesitating, said, I want infinite wisdom. He said, poof, you got it. He sat there for a moment, never said a word. And the other two were waiting for some great wisdom. And they asked him, he said, listen, what wisdom do you have for us today? He said, my wisdom is this. I should have chosen the money. <laughs> See, there were three men sitting there in a the room. And this being appeared to them. You better do better than that this morning. I know a joke about a pink poked out a ping pong ball, <laughs> and I would love to tell that to you. What choice are you going to make with the word that's going to be given to you this morning depends upon you. I entitled this today, The Best Gifts. We only have five more days till Christmas, and you have better... Have all your show. I, that's a joke, Dawson. Don't look at you. <laughs> Mercy. Whatever shopping that you haven't done yet, you need to do. You got special people on your list. You want to get them the right gifts. Now, everybody on our list, we start thinking about it. What can I get them? Something that identifies to them something that they need, something that they want, and you rack your brain trying to figure it out. I finally got mine figured out. Tegan and Jaxie both want dolls. I'm going to get one of them a pink one, one of them a green one. <laughs> See, that way they won't get them mixed up and Brody will be playing with his pacifier and won't bother them. <laughs> See, I've got it all figured out. I'm going to buy them the right gifts. Gracie, she needs a football. I'm going to get her a football. <laughs> Dawson needs direction. I'm going to get that for you. <laughs> you see, I, I take, you take your gifts and you make your gifts line up with a person. We used to give mother, I gave mother a baseball mitt one year. A baseball glove. I thought she needed to. <laughs> now I just buy her the candy I like. See, because I know she's not going to eat it. You buy gifts according to the person. And you want to give them something 
that they will remind or remember you by. Now, I told the girls that I wasn't going to be able to go and stand in the store and fight other men for gifts this year. So I was going to order online, have it delivered to me at my house. And all I had to do was open the box, make sure it's right, wrap it back up, and put it underneath the tree. All was said and done. I told them that three weeks ago. So what we do in our family is we make out Christmas list of what we want. Two weeks ago, I sent them my list. I resent it every day so to make sure they had it. So all is working, all is fine. And yesterday, yesterday, I get Tish's Christmas list. Three weeks ago, I said to them, I'm going to buy all my gifts online. I didn't get her list until yesterday. My own line is over with. So I hope that Jack buys her some extra stuff and I'm going to put my name on it because she waited too long. So what I bought her was gifts that I think that she would like. See, I'm trying to identify it and make it mold to her. I bought her a soccer ball is what Jaxie said she needed. Right, Jaxie? Right. See, I bought her just what she needed. Our gifts must be directed towards a person and then you buy them something that you think they need or they tell you they want, and then you hope for a Merry Christmas. Now, the key to it at our house is that we all come together, we all throw presents under a tree, and every one of them are open basically at the same time. So it doesn't matter what I get them, when it's all said and done, if one of them, like Tish, comes up short because I didn't get her list, all I've got to say, well, hmm, must not have come in yet. <laughs> and that's not telling a story because it hasn't come in yet. <laughs> and that ship will not come in. <laughs> See? But, but you're in a room of joy. Now, after they leave, she can say anything ugly she wants to about me. Doesn't matter because I won't hear it. You see? Gifts. They're important, aren't they? They bring us joy. By the way, Wednesday night, down there, bring your gifts. Put them under that tree. We'll give them out Wednesday night. You can buy gifts for anybody. You can do it in your Sunday school room. You can do it for your teacher. You can do it for your pastor. Bring your gifts or your pastor. Bring your <laughs> gifts down there. And on those, it's my name. Put my name in big letters. I don't want Richard thinking he's the pastor and he gets my gift. I don't want that happening. <laughs> Brother Ed's too old to open them, so it won't matter about him. <laughs> but bring your gifts, and we're going to do that down there, okay? Everybody has something down there. We're going to do fun. Now, your best gifts. How many of you have done all your shopping and you got all your gifts bought? Really? That's good. That's good. All right. At least I know I have 12. That's how many names I can. Just 12 names. Thank you. If you had to buy gifts for Jesus, what would you buy him? See, Jesus sent us a letter. He told us what he would like for us to buy him and give him. How many of you have read that letter? Did, you, did anybody get that memo from Jesus? But if he expects me to buy all of them, he's got another thing coming. Wow. So you didn't get it. All right. I'll give it to you. What would you give Jesus if you could give him a gift. Now we know that we can't give Jesus a gift. We know that, don't we? Wrong. See, his won't be wrapped up in a box with a pretty bow. But every one of us must give Jesus gifts at Christmas. Wouldn't it be foolish 
to have Christmas and you have someone in your family and you not give them a gift and give everybody else in the family a gift, wouldn't, wouldn't that be silly? And how is it that the, the reason for the season is Jesus and we're not even thinking about giving him gifts? So let's look this morning and let's talk about these things. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ or gets saved, he is a new creature. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Now today, the first gift that we want to give Jesus is a new life. In the book of Matthew, I've already read it to you, but in the book of Matthew chapter 2, it says this, And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now, that is the first thing on Christ's list that he gives to us this year. He's saying to every one of us, I would love to you, for you to give me a gift of another way in your life. And if you'll give me that gift, you'll sure make me a happy father. Another way. You see, the wise men had followed that star that Stephanie was talking about. And they came there where Herod was, and they asked, does anybody know where this baby is going to be born? We've come from afar to worship him. And we've followed this star, and do you know? And some of the soothsayers and some of the wise men looked it up, and they said, yes. It says that he'll be born in Bethlehem of Judea. So they said, well, thank you. And Herod says, listen now, uh, if you, when you get there, Come back and tell us where he is because we want to worship him too. And that's the way of the world today. We try to live for Christ. We try to do what's right. We try to follow Jesus, the star in our life. But there's always somebody out there wanting to trick us and wanting to hurt us. There's always going to be somebody at school wanting you to follow them and do it their way. Oh, they'll tell you they're right. They'll tell you it's good. They'll tell you they're saved. They'll tell you they're doing the right thing. People on your job will tell you they're saved, and they want you to do this. They want you to do that. There's even going to be people in church that will tell you they're saved, but they want you to do something, and it's wrong. See, there's always a world out there, but we have to be smart. So the, the wise men went on that other few miles, found Jesus, and worshiped him. But then it says that God told them, Don't go back the way you came. Don't go back to Herod. Go another way. And they did not go back that way. They went another way. God is asking all of us today that this year at Christmas, give him the promise of you living your life another way. Now, I'm not saying you're not saved. To those of you who are not saved, he would like for you to get saved and live another way. But there are all, many of us in here who are saved, but yet there are things we're not doing that God wants us to do. Or there are things that we aren't or are doing that we shouldn't be doing. And God is saying to us, let's quit. This year, give me a rededicated life. I'm going to do things another way. I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to watch certain things on the computer or the TV. I'm not going to listen or tell dirty jokes. I'm going to get away from those things that are bringing my Christianity down. I'm going to quit hanging around with people that I thought were my friends, but they keep pulling me down. I'm going to live another way. I don't have to be what I was. I want to be something new for Christ. So I want to encourage you this morning that the first gift you can give him is that very gift there. Living your life another way. Jesus came to blind Bartimaeus. What would you have me to do? I'd love to have my sight. And Jesus healed him. Jesus found a man that was possessed by demons. And he healed him. And delivered him. 
Jesus found 12 disciples who were living another life in sin. And he gave himself to them and they accepted him. And in each one of those cases, they left and went another way in their life. Bartimaeus could see the man that was possessed by demons begin to live a normal life. The disciples became Christians. You see, whatever it is in your life, Jesus says there's another way. And I want you to give it this morning. So if we can give him that gift, we've made him happy. The second gift that we can give him is service. But not just ordinary service. Urgent service. In the book of Luke, it says, And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. They came with haste. You ever, you ever been around your kids? Of course, I know it's none of our kids, but you know people. You ever been around kids, and you call them, Gracie, come here. Gracie, come here. She finally walks in. Got one of them donut pastries in her hands. Got the jelly on her mouth. Her hair's falling down here. She's in a bathrobe and slippers. And she says, yes, ma'am. And Seth says, says, are you ready for church? No, ma'am, but I'll get ready. <coughs> Two hours later. <laughs> now, she can say, I'm ready. But did she do that with haste? Come on, you can help me. No. Good, you noticed. That's the way a lot of us serve God. God says, I want you to do, uh, he calls us, Danny. I'm watching something, I'm doing something, I'm writing something, I'm going over my list, I'm eating something, I'm drinking something, and when I finally get through it, like, sir, you ready to serve me today? Um, here's what I want you to do today, Danny. I got a family over there that needs some help. I want you to go to them and I want you to help them. Yes, sir, you can count on me. Four hours later, I go to their house. They had left two hours earlier. I missed them. You ever gone to visit somebody who lives in a brick house and you knock on the brick? <laughs> well, I guess they're not here. I'll go. You see, God says a lot of us give him service, but we don't give him urgent service. See, what God wants us to do, he says I, to you, I want you to go to the altar and pray. Moi? <laughs> yeah. When? Yesterday. You see, God calls us to do things for him. The man there at the pool of Bethesda. A crippled man laying there, knowing if he can get in the water, he'll be instantly healed. He never gets in the water. He lays there a year. Jesus, the stirring of the water himself, comes to him and says, why don't you get in the water? Ain't nobody here to help me, bless God. I'm, I made it here. I've been sitting here a whole year, but, and I know there's healing here, but I just can't get in because there ain't nobody to help me get in. You know me. You know, if I, could, if, I, if I could walk, I wouldn't need to get in there, and I would have, Lord. See, so, but I ain't got nobody to help me. What do you want to do? You see, that's the way a lot of us come to God with our service. Ain't nobody to help me. Now, if I just had some encouragement, now, if our preacher would just preach the word, you see, if, if, I, if our choir would sing songs that encourage me, I'd be in the choir. You see? We, we want to serve him with lip service. But he says, I want you to be urgent when I call you because there is a need, and that need is for now. And if you don't meet that need now, that need may pass you by. 
urgent service. He wants us to be ready at a moment's notice to come to him, search for him, and then find him and give him that service that he wants. In this coming year, I would encourage you to give God the second gift, urgent service, that you would be just like Isaiah. Isaiah came to God one day and he got things right. He said, God, here I am. Use me. Right now. Use me. We need to make that commitment to him. Saul, when he came to Jesus that time and had his name changed, when he got right, he said, here I am. What do you want me to do now? And in this coming year, I challenge you to give God the, the, the great gift of urgent service. I've got to be about the master's business now. And when he calls, don't wait. Don't finish what you're doing. Come now. What you're doing can be finished later, even if it gets finished. But the service of God, you do not want him to pass you by because you were slow in coming. Be fast to give yourself to God. Here I am, Lord. What do you want me to do? So the second gift is urgent service that you can give him. They came urgently seeking the baby Jesus. It was a mission. He had told them to go there. Urgent, they went. And they found him. And today I encourage you, urgently give him service. And if you do, you'll find him. Look for him. Whatever you need for God, seek him and you will find him and give yourself to him and change your life in this coming year. The third gift you can give him is simply praise and worship. Praise and worship. In the book of Matthew, it says this. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped him. The wise men, grown men, wealthy men, brilliant men, tired men who had come a long ways. When they got to that house where the star led them, they went inside, they saw the baby, and the first thing they did was fall down at his feet and they worshiped him. In this coming year, one of the things that we need to learn to do is how to be humble before God. Humble. Humble before God. He is God. I'm not. He is God. You're not. And we are to recognize him as God, as Lord, as Savior. The one that died on the cross so that you and I can live. We owe him everything. Everything we owe him. Everything we have, we owe him. And whatever we have, we need to be thankful for it. Whether you have much or whether you have little makes no difference. Whatever you have, we are to worship God with it. Lord, here it is. It's yours. See, that woman with that little bit of money, she took it and she put it in that offering that day when it came by. But the rich men, they just pulled out their billfold, and went through and gave him something. And Jesus said, what she give was greater than all yours because she gave all that she had from her heart. You people picked and choose. You don't trust me. You see, God says, whatever we have, whatever talents you have, what can you do? When we mentioned about next, next Sunday night going to be a time of fun and fellowship and singing and talking and this kind of stuff, some of you wouldn't do it for anything in the world. I ain't got no talent, but you can work the road on your TV. You can drive a vehicle. You see? No, we, we don't want to do things for God because we're ashamed, we're embarrassed. And we need to do whatever we have. I, th I thank Stephanie for doing this because there ought to be a time when the church can give what they have for God. Well, singing ain't no big deal. No, it's not unless it's a talent that God gave you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And shame on anybody who takes their talent and refuses to use it for God. Shame on you. And I don't care what your talent is. You see, talents, their worth is not judged by man. It's judged by God. What is your talent worth? And if you refuse to use it for God, 
He will take that from you and give it to someone else who is working and giving them all they have. What is your talent? And there are so many ways to honor God with your talents. And we've got to learn to give him praise and give him worship. We've got to be willing to find him and bow down before him, realizing that he is the Lord God Almighty. There is but one God, the Lord God Almighty, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the master of the universe. And the Bible says when we get to heaven, we're going to fall down and worship him. But we need to practice that here. You know, we do. Yeah, I, and I, I, I love our choir. I love our musicians. I love our congregation. But we've got to learn to give more and more. So much so in our praise and worship that we look up and literally see God rise from his rest and begin to. <laughs> at his people because he's pleased with the praise and worship. This year, can you make that commitment to God? I'm going to give you more praise and worship, God. This is going to be my gift to you. More praise and worship. I'm going to find ways to praise you. I'm going to find ways to worship you. I'm going to give you more because, God, you are more. And you deserve every bit of it. So we can give him a brand new life, urgent service, praise and worship. But then there's another, another gift you can give him. It tells us again in Matthew chapter 11, they, they found him and they worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gifts, plural, of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, it's been discussed in the Bible about what these gifts represent. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold supposedly represents the deity of God, the greatest there is, the one that is worth everything. The frankincense that they gave would rec rec represent that he was God, that he was our priest. The frankincense gave off an odor that was magnificent. It was a pleasing, sweet-smelling savor unto God, recognizing him as our priest, our leader, and in doing that, you're giving him the best you have. Myrrh was a bitter herb, and they said that represented the bitterness he would have to go through on the cross and what he would suffer for me and you. So if we look at that and we try to apply that to our life today, how can we give that to God as our gifts? What, what is it in recognizing him as God, gold, frankincense, that sweet-smelling savor, our life lives in such a way that it pleases God as an odor of a sweet perfume. And that myrrh, understanding that God gave his life and how he suffered, that we would want to identify with him and be willing to say, God, I suffer also for you. Whatever it takes, whatever the world brings against me, it's okay. I suffer with you for what you did for me. You see, as we do that, in Romans it says, And so, dear brothers, I plead with you to give him your bodies to God. Let them be a living sacrifice, holy, the kind that he can accept. When you think of what he has done for you, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all that you do and in all that you think. Then you will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you. So in this coming year, why don't we tell God we're going to give him our best gifts Gifts, which is ourselves. Make yourself a living sacrifice. There's that sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto him. Not unto me, 
run to your husband or your wife or your mommy under God. Live a life. God, I'm going to live a life to please you. If nobody else in my family does it, I'm going to do you. God, I'm going to do everything in my power to worship you the way that you want me to. Paul said, I die daily. He's not talking about physical death. He said, daily, I give my life to you. I put me down, I lift you up every day of my life, God. It's not what I want, it's what you want. I put you first in my life. I die daily to self. No longer am I going to please me. I'm going to please you. And the Bible says if we learn to do that, then we'll understand how great God is. See, in this coming year, that's what we want to do. Draw closer to God. Be more like God. Understand God. Live with God. See, we got to do that. And you can do it if you learn to give him the greatest gifts that you have. Gifts, plural. That fourth box is a box with a lot of things in it. So I challenge you this morning. Have you gotten your presence ready for God? Have you, have you prepared yet what you're going to give him? What you're going to do? What is good? What is better? What is best? You see, it's good that we were born in this life and we live in America. That's good. It's better when you got reborn and learned to live a life in the church for Jesus Christ. But it's going to be best one day when we die and live in heaven for eternity with God. And the only way we get to do that is each year, which each day we try to get good, better, and best. We keep trying to raise the ante in our lives for God. I want to give him these gifts this year. And our prayer should be, God, I pray that I give it to you in such a way that you accept it. A brand new life, urgent service, worship and praise, multiple gifts. God, I give them to you today because you are worth it. Have you done it yet? You got just a few days left before he's going to require. And then Christmas will be here. And what better way to do it than to start now serving God and giving to him. Wrap a present, put it under your tree to God. Inside that present, put those four things. Write them on a piece of paper. God, this is what I give you this coming year. Give it to God. Give it to God. Bring it and put it underneath this tree down here to God. Be bold enough this year to give him what he deserves and what he wants. And that's you. Father, we are thankful today. You are an awesome God. You've done so much for us. And God, the Bible's full of things about how you give to us. Every day, blessings, anointings. God, things that we could never have were it not for the blessings and the mercy of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But this coming year, we, we get caught up in buying gifts. We, we want to make sure everybody on the list has a present. And God, we'll take that old credit card and we'll max it out knowing that the rest of the year we've got to figure out how to pay it off. Well, God, what you want from us doesn't cost. It's the commitment in our lives that we're going to give you the best that we can give you, which is ourselves. And we've just listed four things. There are a lot of things, but we've just listed four this morning that we could give you that you would be pleased with. No better gift can anyone give you than these things. So, God, will you help us today? Would you help us to make that commitment and say, yes, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name, and then we'll start doing it? I love you, I praise you, and thank you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.